Hey everyone, Disappointed Giant here. So welcome to the Shields tier list. Um, this video is going, it's not, not probably, it's definitely going to be shorter than the melee and range tier list videos that I have up um, because there are only look, five, 15 shields compared to, you know, 40, 30, 50, whatever, however many number items there were in the other categories. Um, I'm going to release this as a pair with another video. Um, so I'm not immediately releasing this uh, as I record it like the other ones. I'm gonna schedule this to release alongside a sibling video that is gonna be about parrying and blocking and general shields mechanics. Um, I've had this on my to-do list for, <laughs> since March now, since July. Um, I've been meaning to put together a quick shields uh, tutorial video. So that's gonna be out by the time this is out. Um, so. If you already know how to block and you know how to parry and you have your shields game down, um, you can probably skip that one. But if not, I'd recommend checking that out and checking this out um, in whichever order you prefer. Maybe watch the other one first um, if you're not down with uh, parrying and blocking so that way you can get some of the mechanics behind you before coming in here to more of the specifics. But either way, we're rolling. Um, like I said, it's March right now, uh, March 2024. It's been uh, it's been kind of a weird month, month and a half or so. Um, just been a lot of stuff going on in life on my end. Um, so I'm definitely behind on some of the things that I've been meaning to do for the channel, uh, meaning to do for the viewers. Uh, but I haven't forgotten all the stuff that I've said <laughs> to people in the comments that I was working on. I'm still working on them, I promise. Um, you know, just to address a couple things, I'm still in the process of uh, finishing up some stuff with DistroKid to get my music up on Spotify. Some folks have requested that, so that is in the works. Uh, hopefully that will be done by the end of the month. Um, I have uh, other tier lists planned. Um, so basically, like I said, this is the third video in the, I guess you could call it a series, the third video in the series. Um, the There are going to be three more. Um, one of them is going to be for traps and grenades. I'm going to put those two together. Um, there's going to be a video for powers. So, you know, like tonic, uh, giant whistle, wings of the crow, whatever. And then there's going to be a third one for mutations. So I anticipate the next two to be pretty equal in length and the mutation ones might be a little bit more chuggy. Um, but those are in the works. Um, so I haven't forgotten, <laughs> haven't forgotten, uh, you know, just so people know, I have read every single comment that I've gotten on any of my videos. Um, so I've either responded with words or I've left a heart just to let people know that I've, I've read them. Um, so any suggestions that I've had, I still have here. Um, and they will be done, you know, over the next, you know, couple months or whatever it is. Uh, like I said, it's just been kind of a, kind of a strange time at the beginning of this year personally. And then of course, you know, all the stuff that's going on with Dead Cells and Evil Empire and Motion Twin has been uh, kind of weird. You know, it's been pretty strange. And, uh, you know, I have a video up about that if you'd like to know my thoughts. Um, yeah. Another thing before we get going, a um, little bit more administrative stuff, uh, you know, going on with the comments and, you know, things that I've talked to people about. Um, I have been planning on streaming at some point. Um, I haven't streamed. <laughs> I used to stream under a different name, like, Jesus, it was uh, spring of 2020. So yeah, almost four years ago. So I haven't streamed in a while. Uh, you know, I feel like I can talk pretty well. I can game pretty well, but doing the two at the same time, um, it's been a bit. So I haven't really kind of gotten in the groove and been ready to do that, but I am planning on it. Um, so what I want to ask you folks is, you know, I have a Twitch account and I also have this account, obviously. Um, so just if you have any suggestions about thoughts on streaming, whether it's platform, uh, you know, format, you know, I was thinking of just doing some casual normal runs, uh, taking in viewer builds, if there's any um, item kind of mechanics or, you know, challenges or stuff like that, uh, I'm open to it. So, you know, it's something I'd like to do. Uh, you know, like I just said, you know, within the next month or two. Um, so any thoughts would be helpful. So anyways, now that we get that all out of the way, thank you for being here. Uh, again, this is the Shields tier list. We got 16 of these to go through, if I'm counting right. No, 15. We got 15 of these to go through. So if you've seen my other tier lists, um, you kind of know how this goes. Um, I'm going to throw my, my rules up here anyway. So... I'm recording this in one single take. I don't have a script. This is all <laughs> this is all that I have written out, so everything else is coming up off the cuff. 
feel like it's a bit more genuine and uh, you know a bit more direct way to have kind of like a conversational video this way. Uh, I'm not going to rank the shields by what are quote unquote best, uh, but ranked by how often, ranked by how often I use the item. Um, and as a side note for that, this tier list is a little bit flatter, right? So the other tier list, I had five. I think it was five or six categories. This I'm only doing three because I feel like shields are very. They're all different, but they all have similar mechanics, right? So when you're going through, I don't know, think of when you go through uh, melee, right? So pure nail is different than broadsword, which is different than the king scepter, which is different than hand hook, which is different than the symmetrical lance. Then, you know, so there's all these things that are, they're in the same family, but they're very different. Um, shields are not super, super different. Of course, we have some exceptions that we'll get to, but in general, the mechanics are a little bit more flat, I would say, than melee or ranged, uh, or even, you know, the other tier lists I'm going to be doing in the future. So I flatten these down to just three categories. So I usually use it, sometimes use it, and rarely use it. All of these shields can be good. Um, this is not a definitive list. I am not the utmost authority on Dead Cells item quality or <laughs> discussion. This is just my personal uh, opinion about my own experience. Um, but all of these shields can be good. Um, they all have a place, including this little guy here. So, um, yeah, if I, if I really like a shield and you don't, that's cool. If I use a shield very little and use it a lot, that's cool. Doesn't matter, right? Um, all right, this is a leftover. So I'm going to go through all the shields. There's only one DLC shield, um, and I'm going to get to that second to last. There's a shield from the Return to Castlevania DLC. And there is one 5BC shield. So the image is on the tier list. Um, so maybe if you don't want to see it, <laughs> You can, I don't know, turn your turn your display off or watch something else while I'm talking here. Um, I do go into more detail about the item and how to get it in my 5BC tutorial video. So if you want a little bit more supplemental info, you can check that out. Otherwise, I am going to talk about that at the end of the video. Um, I'm going to put all the timestamps in the description. So if you want to skip that one, um, I'm going to show the I'm going to show the picture after I finish Alucard Shield. Um, you can skip the next one and then uh, go to the outro if you don't want to know about the 5BC Shield. So, and then finally, all of these will be ranked alphabetically. So as I go through the list, it's not left to right, most to least, best to worst, whatever you want to say. It's just going to be alphabetical, right? So it would be Greed Shield, Ice Shield, Parry Shield, Spike Shield, you know, whatever it is. So, so them be the rules, and I think. I think that's it. I think we're ready to roll. So let's uh, let's go through these. So first off, the the little shield that could is the wooden shield. So I'm gonna put this in rarely, just because it is the starter weapon. However, I will say this shield is excellent, and the reason why I think it's excellent is because it has all of the mechanics of shields. Right, you can learn how to block with it. You can learn how to parry with it. You can take it through the whole game with you on any color build and it will still function as a viable shield. So if all you're trying to do is parry, all you're trying to do is block, the shield's fine. But of course, other shields have more mechanics as we're about to get into. So this immediately gets outclassed as soon as you start picking things up like, you know, the greed shield or the cudgel, you know, any of the, well, those are actually, those are the only two initially unlocked, but you start picking up the, initially unlock ones and then some other ones that pop a little bit more frequently so it gets outclassed but it's a good shield it's also the item that i recommend if you're trying to do the starting item challenge to get the uh, achievement so basically if you finish the game with either the rusty sword uh, beginner's bow or wooden shield you get an achievement i recommend grabbing this this is by far the easiest um, like i said you can throw it in any color build on any bbc and it will get you to the end so even though I think it's decent, it's a great shield, um, I rarely use it just because there are other shields, such as the Cudgel. So Cudgel and Greed Shield. So these two shields are the other two that are initially unlocked by default. So when you start a new save file, these two shields will always be available to you. Um, everything else is blueprint dependent, but these two are uh, straight from the get-go. So. Cudgel, what this does is that um, it will stun an enemy. I think it's on, 
yeah, both blocking and parrying. So it will stun an enemy if you block a parry with it. And I use it sometimes. I think it's a really good shield, um, especially if you take it with something that has synergies with stun, such as Nutcracker, the OG, the OG stun machine, um, you know, and then baseball bat. And then of course, if there are any other item synergies where you get, you know, bonus damage to stunned enemies, you know, that would be, um, it's worth taking. But yeah, I think it's a really solid shield. Um, you know, one of the things that I do um, have a slight hesitation with it is that when you use it on bosses that are susceptible to stun, um, it can kind of throw off their attack patterns a little bit. So if they're in the middle of a chain of attacks, or if you're used to a certain cadence, um, it can kind of interrupt that a bit. But in general, really solid shield. And I feel like, I feel like that's going to be present for a lot of this video <laughs> it's gonna be like yes this shield is good i like it you know greed shield this shield is good i like it um the mechanic of the greed shield is when you uh block a parry and attack it will have an enemy drop a uh gold tooth or gold arrow so you get a little bit of extra a little bit of extra cash as you block and as you parry the mechanics are very straightforward, right? So if we're talking about just general blocking and parrying, like I just said, this immediately gets outclassed by things like this because the mechanics are the exact same. You can block with both, you can parry with both, but this scales better because it has higher, you know, this is just your beginning item quality. This scales as the game goes on and as your scrolls go up, but also you get extra money, right? So looking at all of these, shields really quickly i would say if you're just trying to get your feet under you right you just want to learn how to block you want to learn how to parry you can take this one like i said um, or you can take the greed shield all of these other shields have other mechanics or bonuses um but this is like your your you know peanut butter and jelly here this is this is the the straight and narrow these two shields so um, I do use a greed shield sometimes, you know, again, I think like just down the line, if I'm just looking for a shield, I will not hesitate to pick it up. I'm going to move, <laughs> I'm going to move these around a little bit, actually, just because of mechanics. Uh, I'm going to throw this down here. Okay. So next up, we have the Ice Shield. So you're probably going to see this pretty early on. Um, this drops from the shield bearers in the, you know, the purple guys that are in the prisoner's quarters and all over the place on 0 BC. This is a, I think it's a 10% drop. Um, pretty sure it is a 10% drop. Let me just double check. Yeah, it is. Yep. So it's a 10% drop. So you're going to see this thing pretty frequently. Um, I think it's a I think it's a really useful shield in a lot of ways. Um, so I, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I take I take ice shield a lot. And side note, one of the reasons why I take ice shield a lot is because I like to use it uh, with armadillo pack as a mutation. So, quick side note: I know earlier I mentioned watching the other shields video because I'm going into more mechanics there, uh, and I am talking about armadillo pack there so it's going to be bigger in that video but got to put an aside here so um armadillo pack as a mutation is insane um you know like i mentioned at the beginning of this video a couple times you know you can take shields off color you can take them with any build armadillo pack is is a great mutation if you have an empty slot and you don't know what to put in there or if you're already running a shield and you want extra utility the way that armadillo pack works is you can put a shield in the backpack and when you roll you'll parry so when you roll you kind of see like this little force field sort of in front of you and there's a slight cooldown with it but if you roll through an attack you'll parry an enemy and if you roll through projectiles or like bombs that are on the ground from like those uh the worms in the sewers they'll get reflected back so i take ice shield in the backpack a lot because of the extra utility from ref from parrying and reflecting shots because the enemies will be frozen and it will give a little bit more time to counterattack and it will also proc um, if there's that damage bonus on the weapon the plus 175 percent to frozen so i take it sometimes as like a regular shield uh, but i do take it a lot in the backpack so this is this is one of my staples um you know as a 
kind of a correlation here with the cudgel. It does throw off boss patterns, um, so you know, similar to to this, where you're going to be stunned in bosses and and you know having their attack patterns interrupted. The same thing's going to happen with the ice shield, but personally, I use it a lot. Your mileage may may vary, right? So if you're not uh, if you're not a big fan of freezing enemies, um, you know you may not jive with this one as much as I do. But um, true transparency, I do take it a lot. All right, next up is the spite shield. So spite shield uh, drops from the I forget what the enemies' names are. They're the, the purple dudes with the axes. That they're in like the morass. They are. Uh, yep, they're called cleavers. So these fellows. So they will drop the spike shield. And as you can see, it's a hundred percent drop, which means that if you haven't found another blueprint in that level, if you kill a cleaver, you are most likely going to get this blueprint. Um, it costs five cells at this point, which is <laughs> just so cheap. Five cells is ridiculous. Um, this thing is fantastic. So I do take this a lot and I prefer to take this as uh, a main weapon, right? So I don't throw this in the backpack too much. I usually use this as a just straight up force for parrying. It does, uh, the mechanics of the spike shield is that it basically does a ton of damage when you parry an enemy. So it's almost like a reactive weapon, right? So I think out of all out of all the shields, um, this one here is the most, one of the most offensive ones. Um, if you're, if you got your parrying down, you got your shield mechanics down and you kind of want to take the next step, uh, definitely grab spike shield, see how it goes. Um, it's incredibly powerful. It scales great and it just does, it does a lot of damage. It's almost... I don't have the, I don't, I don't have the raw numbers in front of me to, to compare, but like it feels just like a weapon, right? It feels almost like you're swinging a broadsword when you parry with this thing, just because it will, it'll kill enemies in like one or two, one or two parries. It's awesome. Super offensive, again, super cheap. Um, it's a great shield. The companion to spike shield um, is the punishment and punishment is found in the clock tower. So there is a very tricky how do I say this? There's a very tricky bell puzzle that you need to do in the clock tower. What it is is that as you go through the level, you may have seen bells in the background and they'll, if you attack them, if you, you know, you hit them with the arrow, you hit them with your sword, the bell will swing and it will make a noise. And what you need to do is you need to hit the bells in a certain arrow, uh, arrow <laughs> excuse me, in a certain order it, to get this key to drop which then opens the door where the punishment is and then you have to do uh let's see is it low to high yep so you need to ring these bells from lowest to highest um i'm gonna put a little asterisk here uh you might want to check back in a couple months uh <laughs> you might want to check back here in a couple months but that's how at this point that's how you get it you just need to find those bells uh ring them in the order from the lowest pitch to the highest pitch this bell tower key will drop, and then from there you can open the open the door in the clock tower and get the punishment shield. So this is a sibling shield to the spike shield. So what it does is that it, when you parry with it, when you block with it, when you have it in the armadillo pack, it will create an AOE of damage around you that will damage every everything that's in that little in the sphere. Um, it's not as strong as Spike Shield because it's not a direct attack, right? So since it has more of that kind of range around it, um, it does less damage. I mean, that's more of a balancing thing, but it's still very, very good. And I use it very often. There's like, there's something special too about getting either of these shields off color you know if i pull a punishment out of a cursed chest on a brutality build like i get stoked i get super stoked it's awesome some people will do shield on like shield only challenges where they'll take <laughs> they'll they won't take any offensive items so no melee you know no uh no range weapons or whatever and they'll just only use shields to get through the game so they're getting through with parrying basically everything 
these are the two shields that you'd want to do that with because you have your direct heavy damage here with your with your spike shield and then you have your secondary damage you have aoe you have you know kind of going back and forth between the two you can do some pretty good damage so uh punishment i use it i use it a lot um, I do think it's very much worth the frustration of going through the clock tower puzzle, ringing the bells, making notes as to which tower which bells are in, so that way you can get the blueprint. Um, I think it's fantastic. Parry shield. So, um, and this is the reason, as, as you folks are going to start to see, this is the reason why my why this tier list is so flat is because like i either use things usually or sometimes i don't think spoiler alert i don't think any of these are going to end up on the bottom row um except for the wooden shield so parry shield so parry shield is uh and another thing i haven't even mentioned this yet all of these so far have been survival scaling only these are all single colors some of these are dual scaling, and the first one that is dual scaling here is the parry shield, which is uh, purple and survival. So it's tactics and survival. Uh, oops, sorry about that. You can get parry shield, and this is cool. So punishment, frontline shield. Yeah, it's just those two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but punishment, parry shield, and frontline shield, um, you, they're like puzzles, right? So all of these were in the game back in 1.0, so forever ago. And there are some environmental puzzles where you can find blueprints, and those three have them. So I just mentioned the, the bell tower one here. So in order to get the uh, parry shield, what you need to do is you need to have the spider rune. So if you haven't gotten all your runes, you want to get the spider rune from the slumbering sanctuary. That's the one that allows you to run up walls. So in the Stilt Village, what you do is you go through the first section, the little section of the huts or whatever it is, you get the key. And instead of opening the door to get to like the next part of the level, before the door, there's like platforms that are higher up. So you want to climb up to the top of the, the area to the right of that first hut section. And then you'll be able to find some platforms and then you can jump to the tower and go up and over where the door is so you can actually keep the key go up and over and then down into the second section of the level from there you go through as normal you get the second key open the door at the very end to get to the clock tower and then from there as soon as you hit the elevator on the right hand side you'll see a little platform jump to the right slam down through the platform use that second key to open the little door and then you can get the parry shield in there I love blueprints that have little journeys like that instead of just popping, you know, instead of just being on a shelf somewhere or popping, like I, I, I like these little puzzle blueprints. I think it's super cool. So that's how you get the parry shield. Um, if you don't have it, if you look at the map of Stilt Village on the very right hand side, you'll actually see a small little uh, building with the lock on it. So you can see exactly where it is. Again, it's 100% of the time, all the way on the right hand side of the screen. Always, always on the right hand side of the map. Um, so being dual scaling, I think is great. Um, especially if you put this in the backpack off color or excuse me, tactics in the backpack. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Um, I take parry shield a lot, so you cannot block with the parry shield. That's the, that's the quote unquote downside downside, but I feel like, you know, and if you'll see the other shields video I put up blocking is such a niche thing i don't know anybody that blocks i rarely block or hardly ever block myself so i don't even see that as a downside um the way that this works is that it does um you know when you parry it will do extra damage of course but the other thing is that uh if you block a projectile or if you end up uh here you go yeah grenades are shot to return with added power if you block a projectile, if you roll through bombs, they basically like double or triple or quadruple. I think, um, all right, let me see if I can do this here. So you're gonna see some of my videos. I think I have a ton of videos, obviously. Uh, parry, parry. Maybe I don't. There's one video I have somewhere uh, of the mutineer where I parry the mutineer's axe. 
Mutations. I don't have it. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but I have this video where like I parry this mut the mutineer from the shipwreck and it explodes into literally like 20 projectiles because of the way that the <laughs> the way that the mutineer's anchor attack is. It has so many different hitboxes that when I roll through it with the parry shield, it deflects all of them and each one has like four or five projectiles. It's it's insane. Um, anyways, that was that was an aside. So with the parry shield, um, you know, it does a lot of good damage when you parry with it. But the real benefit, in my opinion, is if you're going to parry or roll through with armadillo pack um, projectiles or grenades, because it will multiply those. It will do a lot of extra damage. Um, you know, there is seldom is something as enjoyable as parrying an inquisitor through a wall with the parry shield and watching it explode as you hit it with like four of its own projectiles. So I use the parry shield a lot, um, similar to the punishment. You know, there is a little bit of, of leg work in order to get there, um, but it's definitely worth it. And the fact that it does dual scale and the fact that you can't take it with tactics is, it's pretty rad too, so. All right, let's do Rampart. So. <laughs> Rampart, I've seen Rampart listed as, what's the word, like a crutch? Is that the right word, like a noob crutch or a noob trap or something? Because when you parry with it, it will give you um, an invincibility shield for two seconds. So if you think about, I don't know, think of Hand of the King, right? He has this three attack where he swings his lance at you three times. If you block the first one, or excuse me, if you parry the first one with the Rampart, You'll be protected by that shield. And then his second two attacks won't hit you because you're invincible. So the shield is very, very strong in a defensive way. Doesn't do a lot of damage. Um, you know, it's not something like the punishment or parry shield or spike shield where you're going to be popping enemies if you parry with it. But the utility of this is great. And personally, I don't care if you're in, you've just got this shield after playing for 10 minutes i don't care if you've been playing for three hours or three years like i'm someone who's been playing for a long time i still grab this all the time i don't look at it as a trap i don't look at it as a crutch i look at it as an incredibly utility like a, the utility is incredible so uh don't have any shame for taking this i definitely don't i take it a lot um if i'm going for flawless kills especially um, you know, if I do a new safe on, I'm trying to flawless the 5BC boss or, you know, I'm having a little bit of trouble with maybe concierge or timekeeper or whatever. I'll take, I'll take Rampart. I'll take it off color. I, I use it a lot. Um, like I said, don't feel shame about it. It's great. And there's just something to be said about, you know, having already, you know, aside from a couple ones that are, a couple ones that are kind of similar here, you know, these shields are, they all have like similar function, but they all for the most part bring their own little unique spin to it and this the spin that the rampart brings is it's just extra protection you know it gives you an extra couple seconds to breathe like we all know how crazy some of these fights can be you know like if you like say you're in the middle of a giant fight and you parry his fist attack that comes across the bottom of the screen like you can breathe for a second before he slams down. You know, again, like I just said, Hand of the King, you can tank a couple of attacks and catch your breath. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, Rampart is incredibly powerful. It used to be, I think, so it's two seconds now. I'm, pr I'm fairly certain it's two seconds, yeah. So right now, it's two seconds, and back in the day, it used to be three. <laughs> so I think, I think in 1.0, it was three, and then it got nerfed down to... Yeah, it's missing some history here. It used to be three seconds, and then at one point it got nerfed down to like 2.5, uh, 2.5 seconds, sometime around like the you know middle one, so like 1.5, 1.6 updates. Um, and then I think in version, what's the damage? I think in 2.4 it got it got bounced down to two seconds. But either way, super super great shield. I love it. So I usually use it. Next up is the Bloodthirsty Shield. So this shield's kind of like, it's it's interesting because it is a brutality survival scaling shield, right? So there's extra utility there, especially when you think about brutality being more of like the bleed family of builds, right? Because you have, 
you know, cleaver, throwing knives, uh, blood sword, knife dance. Um, there's a lot of like bleed stuff that is focused towards brutality. So having the ability to have a shield that will cause bleeding around you when you block or when you parry, it feels useful on paper. In practice though, I think it's underwhelming. And part of it is because like, yes, you know, it will, it will proc the bleed status so you can get extra damage on an enemy that's bleeding. Um, you can use it because of the, the area of effect where the bleed is. It will kill bats that are nearby. So there's, there are a lot of benefits to it, but I feel like, I feel like it's just not that, I feel like the utility is better on paper than it is in, in, in usage, right? So here we go. Yeah. So three seconds of bleeding for 15 DPS base. Um, does it have scaling in here? No, it doesn't have the scaling in here. Um, so the way that bleeding works is it's like Bloodborne. So I don't know if anybody's played Bloodborne or Dark Souls or like any of those FromSoft games, but the way that bleeding works in those games is that it stacks. It's a status effect that stacks. And then once you get a certain amount of stacks, it pops. Bleeding used to just be a status effect in, in Dead Cells, but I think in 1.9, they redid most of the DOTs and they made it so bleed works similar to how FromSoft game works. So when you have five ticks of bleeding on an enemy, it will pop and it will do a bigger burst of damage, right? So in theory, right? So if this is the... Um, so if you were to parry with this, it would do, you know, 15, base 15 DPS of, of bleeding for, for three seconds. So as those stacks build up, the damage will tick down more, right? So of course, if you have three stacks of bleeding, it will do more damage than one stack of bleeding. And once you get to that five stacks, you'll see a pop. It will have like a little visual on the background where you'll see blood kind of like splatter on the background. And then it resets. So you can start doing bleeding again. The issue I have with the Bloodthirsty Shield is that if you parry, it's it's like it doesn't really add stacks quickly enough, especially when you compare it to other things. Think of how quick you can get blood stacks with a uh, cleaver. Think of how quick you can get blood stacks with a blood sword. So this is supplemental in a way where it just feels underwhelming. Um, you know, I think if you're gonna take this, it's it's a good. I mean, again. All these shields have their own usage. There's no nothing bad in the lot here. Um, I feel like if you're taking this for bleeding, it's going to sound funny to say, but it's almost like that's like the secondary to it, right? Um, I take this mostly on brutality builds where I need a red shield. The bleeding is an extra bonus. Um, sometimes I take it with the blood build. Sometimes I just take it with the brutality build because I want to parry. I want to block whatever it is, you know? So I do take this thing sometimes. Um, and again, that's not a dig on it. I don't think it's a bad shield by any means, um, but I just do think that the actual function of the bleeding, um, because of how the stacks work and because of how the DOT works, it's not as useful, I guess, as it used to be before they reworked, before they reworked the dot. But I still take it, um, again, like I just said, I take it especially on brutality builds. And, you know, on the other side of this too, if you are playing a parry heavy build and you have an item, like if you have this in your second slot and you have an item in your main slot that has extra damage to bleeding, like, hell yeah, take it. It's great because you'll get that extra 60%. The bleeding causes poisoning affix is also pretty easy to get on this. So if you have an item, I don't feel like I'm talking about, <laughs> it's like I went over this in my face flash video, but if you have the bleeding, you know, plus 60 to bleeding and then you're plus 80 to poison and you have the bleeding causes poisoning affix on this thing, you'll be getting an extra 140% damage on your main attack. So if you're looking for that, I think it's good. Um, but again, you know, long-winded way of me saying that I feel like it's just a little underwhelming. Um, you know, the the legendary does two stacks of blood, which is better. Um, but again, I think for me, the, the main utility for that is, is just having an extra shield and brutality. Speaking of... Extra shield brutality, frontline shield. There's a storied history to this. So way back in the day, going literally like release 1.0. So we're going back like August, 2018. 
The Frontline Shield, I'm pretty sure this was the icon for it. They did some shield reworks way back in the day. But the Frontline Shield was the opposite of the Parry Shield. So what you could not do is parry with it. All you could do is hold the shield up. It was so useless. And I think uh, the description of this says something about like it's uh, built with like the tears. Yeah, here you go. The tears of the community are engraved upon the inside of the shield. So, so many people when this game first came out were just like, what is, what is with this shield? It's useless. I can't do anything with it. So they reworked it. And the way that they reworked it is that um, when you parry, it does extra damage to all of your melee ac all of your melee attacks for six seconds after a successful parry. It used to be 20%, and then I think in either 1.9 or 2.4, they buffed it. Uh, they buffed it up to a bigger. Yeah, there we go. Yep. So it got buffed. So if you parry with this thing, um, every melee, or even if you block with it. Every melee attack that you do for six damage, six seconds does an extra 50% damage. That's great. That is, it's great because it's an easy way to get extra chunks. Um, you know, this is a dual scaling brutality and survival. So you can take this with, I don't know, you can take it um, brutality with balance blade and the combo mutation. And then for six seconds, not only is your damage increasing through combo, and it's increasing through the balance blade starting to get crits, but it's also an extra 50%. That stuff adds up pretty quickly. You take this on survival, use it with something like Maw the Deep, use it with Wrecking Ball, use it with Broadsword, Oven Axe, like you name it. You know, 50% on a big attack is big, <laughs> right? 50% on 100 DPS versus 50% on 500 DPS is, is a big difference. So um, either way, whether you're going, you know, quick, lots of little quick attacks or slower big attacks, this shield is, is incredibly useful. Um, if you couldn't tell, um, I do take this. Usually, um, and again, since it's brutality scaling as well as survival, there's extra utility there. I think it's fantastic. Um, one of my favorite shields, which again, just because I feel like for the most part, if I'm taking a shield, um, you know, with some exceptions, um, you know, some, some tactics exceptions, if I take a shield, I'm basically running melee for the most part. So this is almost universally except, uh, universally helpful. So it's fresh. Um, the way that you find that is in the ancient sewers, as you go through the level, there's like a, there's a lava pit that's small and at the bottom of it, you can actually see, does it show it down here? It doesn't. You can actually see, uh, like if you were to go through the lava pit, there's uh, an area below it. You can either jump through it and get the blueprint down there. You'll take a little bit of damage um, through the from the poison in the pit, um, or you can detach your head and pop your head down there to get the blueprint. So uh, yeah, frontline shield is, is pretty sweet. Next up is Force Shield. So this one's so strange. So Force Shield is, it's like incredibly powerful. So the way that Force Shield works is think of the invincibility that you get from Rampart, right? You block or parry with it. You get your, you get your two seconds of invincibility. This has invincibility on demand. So what you do is you hold the shield up and it provides you with a circle of invulnerability and then it has ammo like a ranged item. So as you hold it up, you know, the ammo is going to start ticking down, ticking down. Okay. I don't know uh, the actual numbers for how long the, the shield will stay. Yeah, let's see. There you go. Three seconds. Okay. So on demand, you have <laughs> three seconds. When you parry, it will recharge the ammo more. Um, and then I believe if you have... Yeah, so ammo doesn't work on it, but you can get an affix that has an extra three ammo or whatever it is. This thing's super powerful, and it's again, it's powerful in a defensive way. If you're in a, again, similar to Ramparts, right? If you're in a boss fight where you just need a moment to breathe, you can just hold that shield down, get your invulnerability against all attacks, literally take a breath, right? Three seconds, right? That's three seconds. You can take a breath, you can recenter yourself, and then get back to the fight. I don't use this all the time 
because like again like i don't think about it as much as i should because you know i'm using other shields for different utility but this is so powerful so i take this sometimes but i don't want to dissuade people from using this or experimenting with it um if you are a beginner if you are someone who is just like i just said just trying to catch your breath if you're someone who hasn't used the force shield much just take it take it and try it and just see what it's like you know if you're on 5 bc and you're in the prison depths and you're in the middle of like a disaster right just hold the shield up hold the shield up count to three gather yourself throw your powerful grenade use your telluric shock whatever you're doing right just take a breath so it's it's a very strong utility shield again i use it sometimes because i'm you know digging into other stuff most of the time but like do not overlook this shield um it's 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 something <laughs> you know unfortunately you know in the backpack it doesn't do much because you need to actively hold it up in order to get the force shield but give it a shot next up is the knockback shield so <sighs> I have I have opinions about this shield. So the knockback shield is similar to parry shield, where it's both uh, survival and tactic scaling. So back in the day, I know I said back in the day before, a while ago, and they changed this in version 1.9. But up until version 1.8, survival and tactics had some uh, overlap, where there were ranged items that were both dual scaling, right? So right now, so you think of some of the uh, tactics only. So Nerves of Steel, uh, Multiple Noxbow, uh, War Javelin. Uh, there's a few other ones, but basically those were both survival and tactic scaling. Or excuse me, yeah, survival and tactic scaling. So back in the day, this made a lot more sense because the way that this shield works, when you parry with it, it will knock a sh knock an enemy back. So think of like a Spartan Spartan sandal type thing. It will knock an enemy across the screen. Um, it will put them in range of being able to proc the tranquility mutation. It puts them in great range in order to have uh, any of your ranged attacks hit them <laughs> much more safely. So if I were playing version 1.8 or earlier, I would recommend taking this with any build. Take it with survival, take it with tactics. As of right now, I don't necessarily recommend taking this with survival because when you parry with it and the enemies go far away, most of the survival items, and I know that this is a shields tier list, but you can see all this other stuff. But you know, if you look at most of like the heavy survival items here, you know, tombstone, toothpick, oven axe, uh, you know, the shark, the wrecking ball, those are all like slow, close quarter attacks. If you have the broadsword, if you have broadsword, you don't want to parry with this and have an enemy go farther away so that way it's out of the range of your attacks. So on survival, for the most part, unless you have some kind of ranged colorless or some other kind of funky build that you're dealing with, I don't recommend taking this on survival. Um, I do highly recommend taking this on tactics. So, uh, long story short, I do take that sometimes when I'm running a shield on a tactics build because it's great because it can pop enemies across the screen and then you can use your multi nox bow, you can use your quick bow, you can use whatever it is to get extra damage or not get extra damage, but to get that damage safely since the knockback shield will create some space between the two. So, um, yeah, I do take it sometimes, and again, it's very it's it's more case specific, but um, it does have it does have its function with a with a tactics build. But again, survival, I can't I can't really recommend it. Um, and also, <laughs> in case you haven't noticed, these two are basically the same exact icon, except they put a spike, <laughs> they put a spike, and a little sparkle, and they zoomed in a bit to make it look different but you can't you can't fool us you can't fool us so knockback shield yeah I take it sometimes assault shield i almost feel like i need a separate tier list for assault shield because it's it's <laughs> it's a cross between a melee item a shield and a movement ability it's it's ridiculous so um i take assault shield 
all the time. I take it off color. I take it brutality. I take it survival. The main reason why I take Assault Shield personally is because of the movement, uh, the extra movement abilities that it grants you. So let me see. I definitely have this one. I know I'll be able to find this video pretty quickly. So uh, let's do random clips. Assault Shield movement. Here we go. So if you have your Assault Shield in a slot, and you press it and then immediately afterwards you press your roll, what will happen, let me see how big this is. Oh, I'm gonna have to resize this really quickly. Here we go. So when you press the assault shield and then you press roll, what will happen is that you will slide. See that? So if you just press the assault shield, you'll slide a little bit, right? If you press it with the roll, look at that. Look at how far you can move with that. So you can do this on the ground, you can do it in the air. You can do it off of a wall. Yeah, see? I love it. I love that movement. I think it's fantastic. So I take Assault Shield all the time. It's not only useful for that movement tech. Um, it's useful. It's incredibly useful for interrupting enemies. So if you were to watch um, Fresh File speedruns, one of the techniques that folks use is to grab the assault shield so you get this in the um i think it's in the two minute door to the promenade so you can get it immediately you can get it right after you finish the prisoner's quarters as long as you're quick enough it takes 40 cells so what speedrunners will do is they will kill 30 enemies in the prisoner's quarters and get to the prom door before two minutes so that way you have five at least five cells from the enemies that you kill in the biome you have 20 cells from the kill door and then 20 cells from the time door. The five cells will allow you to unlock the health potion, which then opens up the rest of the collector's menu. And then the 40 cells from the other two doors allow you to unlock the assault shield. So within, you know, two minutes of starting a fresh file, you're going to be zipping around like I just showed you. So it's, it's great. But anyways, not only can you zip around with it, but if you watch these speed runs, people will fight the concierge, and as he goes to rear back for one of his attacks, if you just tap the shield button, it will lightly bump up against him, it will interrupt the attack. So you can get some attacks off, when he raises his hand, bump him with the assault shield, attack again. When he goes to do his aura, bump him. When he goes to slam the ground, bump him. It's a great way to interrupt enemies. It's a great way to knock enemies off of ledges. So think of the promenade, think of ramparts, right? Think of fractured shrines or whatever it is. You can use this to bump into enemies and will knock them off the platform to either get fall damage or just kill them outright. And then also it's pretty strong when you parry with it. So the caveat here is that the parry window for the assault shield, it feels to me personally, it feels smaller than normal parry windows from other shields. I know there's movement involved because you need to almost like, like when you move and you hit the button and it brings you forward, it's like you need to parry like at the end where it connects. So the window feels different. The movement feels different. You can use it for parrying. I do use it to parry sometimes, um, but again, mostly I use it for movement tech, for interruption, for knocking enemies off the off ledges. This thing is wild. So, so far in my other tier list, I've had like one item that I've put as like my favorite, right? That I use all the time. So melee is Alucard shield, excuse me, Alucard sword. Ranged was Gilded Yumi. And then for shields, it's going to be Assault Shield. And that's interesting because all three of those kind of break rules, right? So the Alucard sword breaks the rules of movement. In positioning, uh, Yumi breaks the rules of enemy positioning and in, in heaviness of tactics, and then Assault Shield breaks the rules of not just holding a shield up. It, it, as you can see from the icon, you move with it. So I love this thing to pieces. I use it all the time. Um, it does take some time to get used to. There's definitely a learning curve. Um, but like I said, grab it, grab it from the two minute door in the promenade, take it to the promenade, right? Take it through the, the traditional zero BC route, get it through promenade, get it through ramparts. If you haven't used it, mess with it a little bit. Um, if you haven't seen, uh, zero to five, uh, excuse me, fresh file speed runs, um, check some of them out, right? I don't know. I don't know who's still running at this point. I don't know if Nano's still doing it. Um, I don't know, I don't think Vord's doing it, but you know, there are some folks that have been 
that, that have been running at least historically um definitely check it out you know there, there's some really cool tech with that but yeah i love this thing to pieces in case you haven't <laughs> in case you haven't noticed yet um again it's the most unique shield out of all of these um i feel like it almost needs its own video but assault shield is is wild absolutely wild all right we only got two left so like i said this one's gonna be quicker <laughs> It's going to be quicker. I also feel like it's a little bit more repetitive because it's sort of like, all right, you can parry with it. You can block with it and you can parry with it. And here's what it does when you block a parry, you know. So Alucard Shield is basically. This is going to sound funny. So. Melee item. Iron Staff is basically a melee shield. So the way that and I talked about this in my melee tier list a little bit. The way that this item works is that when you attack with it, you can parry the first attack and it will, just like a shield, it will deflect damage back and then the next two attacks are critical. So, uh, like, raziel has got a great video where he parries, uh, I think it's con definitely conjunct, you know, um, some of the first tier bosses with it getting flawlesses, like, it's, it's, if you know how to use it, it's really, really cool. So this is like the melee shield. And Alucard Shield is like the shield melee shield because what this does is basically the same thing as Iron Staff. So what you do is you can kind of use it as a as a as a melee weapon. If you parry with it, the next two attacks are critical. So it's interesting because this took a shield mechanic and made it melee, and then this took a melee mechanic from a shield and then made it back to shield again. So it's uh, it dual scales with both um, brutality and survival um as i mentioned earlier in the video this is from the return to castlevania dlc so this is the only shield on the list here that you need to pay for um you can find it right at the beginning of the castle outskirts um or i should say on the first area of the castle outskirts all the way at the very right hand side before you get on the elevator roll through the wall in the alucard room and it will be there what's great about the alucard shield is that if you take it with the sword it kind of changes the move set, right? So, um, as I mentioned, you know, if you parry once with this thing, the next two attacks will do critical damage. Um, if you use the sword, the shield can do crits. If you use the sword while you have the shield it equipped, it will also do parries in the middle of it. It's really interesting. Um, and that the other thing too is like this is old school Castlevania stuff, but you can see the end, you can see the weapons on the beheaded. So normally, like you don't really see them, right? So if you have a broadsword, he's not always walking around with a broadsword. It comes out when you attack with it. But these two items will show up. So clearly it's meant to be synergistic with the Alucard sword. So if you have both of them, I feel like there's extra utility. Um on its own, I struggle with this a little bit because of the timing, right? So I don't know if it's just a visual thing. I don't know if there's a delay with how the parries are, are functioned with this thing. But let's say, um, take a slasher, right? Big Skeletor looking dude from the prison depths, ossuary. If you parry his first big attack with the Alucard shield, it does damage, obviously. I feel like I have to mash the button again to get those next two attacks off because it's almost like I'm a frame early from getting hit by his next slashes. So to me, it feels more risky than it is. So I don't use it all the time. If I'm going brutality, I'm probably going to take frontline. If I'm going for extra melee damage, I'm going to take assault shield if I'm going for movement and other tech. Alucard shield's like at the bottom of the list for brutality stuff i don't usually take it with survival because if i'm trying to get extra damage i'm going to take punishment i'm going to take spike shield um i do use it sometimes though just because you know having a having an extra shield and brutality is good um trying to learn the mechanics is good if you have the alucard sword it's better um yeah you know so it's it's really interesting and again the fact that it's like it's basically the shield version of the iron staff is interesting right so what you could do is you can <laughs> If you really want to, if you really want to get into it, take Iron Staff as your primary and take Alucard Shield as your secondary and just play with the mechanics and see how things go, right? But yeah, only, that's the only, um, 
that's the only shield from the DLC. And it's interesting too, because aside from the next shield that I'm gonna talk about, which was introduced in version 1.2, this was 3.3. All of these other shields for the most part have been there since the beginning. Um, like I mentioned earlier when we talked about Frontline, you know, this got revamped. Uh, it might've been 1.1 or 1.2, I can't forget, I can't remember. But for like 21 versions of the game, there were no new shields. Things got buffed, things got moved, but like that was it, you know? And it's interesting too, cause they did that and I'll go into this in my grenade, you know, when I do a tier list for grenades and, and turrets, but like grenades were the same thing. They had however many grenades it was. And then until the Castlevania DLC came out, there were no new ones. Super, super interesting. So this is the only shield you get to pay for. Um, is it worth the 10 bucks? No. Is the rest of the DLC worth the 10 bucks? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, all right, so the next shield, the last shield that we're going to talk about is the 5 BC shield. So I'm going to um, briefly just mention, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you don't want to know about this one, go to the timestamp and just click on outro or whatever it says. Um, I'm not going to name this shield in the timestamp. It's just going to say 5 BC shield. So you can skip it. If you don't want to skip it, we're going to talk about it now. So 5 BC shield is the thunder shield. So this is another tactics survival shield. And it also, it also is a unique shield based on its mechanics. So I went into this more in my 5 BC tutorial video. I'll, I'll kind of go over some of the scraps again, but basically the way that this works is if you hold the shield up, it will, let me see, I think I got more video. And thank you, thank you for bearing with me as I'm just like stumbling over. Yeah, perfect. I do have Thunder Shield stuff. I got like a bunch of clips for Thunder Shield. There we go. So if you hold the attack up, it's gonna just do that, right? So you can electrocute enemies in, in water, you can use it to do shock damage, you can do whatever it is. So it has a, a ranged attack when you hold things up. Um, if you parry with it, yeah, here we go. So if you parry with it, what will happen is that there's a AOE that will come around you. See that? It, it'll have an AOE that will do damage to enemies. So if you look, let me go back through here, right? So right here, I'm gonna parry with the shield, okay? And now if you look around the beheaded, see how there's this electricity in the air? right here that is the passive effect of pairing with the thunder shield so i think it's for like maybe seven or eight seconds that will come around you so as you watch the video here you can see all the enemies are still taking shock damage right there's a little bit of you can see the the shock arrow or the shock icon above everyone's head if you press the shield button again while you have that aoe active it will ready boom there you go it will have this big area of effect that will also do shock damage so it's really interesting because like i said earlier you can hold the button up have the electricity come out or you can kind of use the parrying to get extra shock damage and if you parry and then press the button again as the shock damage is happening you can have this little explosion What's really interesting, I just found out about this myself last week. I'm, I'm sure people know about this. I'm not, you know, I'm not like some, some grand explorer here, but um, I've realized that the AOE, both the AOE and the passive shock from the Thunder Shield, either whether you're holding it up or whether it's the residual from a parry, triggers the networking mutation. So what you can do is you can parry an attack with the Thunder Shield, run through a group of enemies as you get your little lightning around you, proc networking on everything and then just go to town um it's super interesting super interesting so similar to the knockback shield i don't take this often with survival um i do take it more often with tactics i'll throw it in the backpack more often um because it scales better with shock right so shock is all tactics we got e-whip wings of the crow tesla coil right and then like i mentioned networking you get thunder shield so i feel like this is more of a tactics item never mind the fact that it's a purple it's a purple icon um because the 
Thunder Shield is a little bit more complicated. I do not take it all the time, um, just because I feel like it's it requires more management than something like a parry shield or a spike shield. Um, but I do take it a lot. Um, excuse me. <laughs> do take it sometimes. I'm like used to my old my old pad my old tier list things, but I do take it sometimes. Uh, again, you know, if I'm looking for that extra shock, if I'm looking for some more mechanics, if I'm looking to proc networking in a way that's pretty aggressive. Um, I'll grab it and I think you should too. Again, this is 5BC only. Um, it drops from the protector enemies, which are, uh, if you've been to 5BC, they're the little, little folks that are, um, or the defenders, I should say, little folks that are walking around with the, uh, <laughs> with the force fields. I think it's a 10%. Oh, it's a 100% drop. So uh, there's a very good chance that you're going to get this on your first time to the Astral Lab. So, uh, it's a pretty sweet, it's a pretty sweet item. Uh, but again, you know, I'll take it sometimes just because of the extra, the extra brain power that it requires to use, right? And that's it, right? Giant whistle signaling the end of the quarter, end of the game. So that's all we got. So we got 15 shields here. As you can see, things are really even as far as my own experience with them. Um, it is lit, you know, not counting the starting weapon. It is literally split right down the middle. We got seven. I take a lot and seven. I take sometimes, um, as I mentioned before, this is a, a companion video to the shields video and parry video that I have coming out. So if you are not too familiar with mechanics, I recommend checking that out. Um, and if you already checked that out and came here from there. Thank you for watching all this. Um, I hope this has been helpful. You know, like I said earlier, uh, a lot of folks have been asking about, um, you know, me doing more tier lists. And uh, this is three, part three out of six. Um, and I'm also going to make a playlist that I'll, I'll throw in the description too. So if you haven't seen my melee tier list video, if you haven't seen the ranged one, you enjoyed the format of this, it's going to be more of the same, except those are legitimately two and a half hours each. It's, it's wild. I talk way too much. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed i like to talk a lot so um yeah so that's it that's what we got for shields so hopefully this was helpful um you know as i said at the beginning of the video uh thanks for kind of bearing with me as you know just stuff's been been happening in my own personal life and things have kind of been shifting a little bit um i have not forgotten about any video requests or other things that I've talked with folks about. Everything's on my list. Um, so I'm going to get to as much of it as I can, as I do. Um, again, if you have any thoughts about streaming or build requests or whatever, uh, I'm open to it because I do want to have a little bit more um, real time engagement with people. Um, I also just love, like I said, I love chatting. I haven't, I haven't streamed in a while, so it might be a little bit rusty as far as doing both talking and playing, but, um, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun to kind of hang out with some folks and, you know, play a run or two and just kind of catch up and, you know, have asked questions and make jokes and talk about things and, and whatever it is. So if that's something you're interested in, um, let me know in the comments. And uh, again, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you made it through the whole video, thank you for watching all of it. Uh, thank you for bearing with my ramblings and my back and forth and all of that. Um, I really appreciate it. This has been this has been fun for me to, in general, this channel's been fun, but these, these tier lists are really fun for me because it gives me a chance to just sit down with my cup of tea at my desk and just just talk, you know, just like we're all sitting in a circle, you know, drinking tea or having a beer or having lunch together or whatever it is. And just kind of, you know, talking about a bunch of dead cell stuff. So, um, thanks for watching. Um, if you're playing dead cells and you're struggling with your runs, um, I have a tutorial series that I'll link below that might be helpful. Um, you know, I've heard from some folks that have given some great feedback and like, yeah, it's, of course, it's nice to hear people like, Oh, cool. I enjoyed your video, but there are, I've gotten a few comments recently from people that have, gotten to you know gotten unstuck from 2bc or 3bc because of the videos that i put together and to me like those those comments mean the world to me because that shows that like not from like an egotistical standpoint we're like oh i'm helping someone but just the fact that like there was an energy blockage somewhere and there was a struggle that i was able to take my experience and help someone with theirs and like that means the world to me so uh i'm gonna link the tutorial stuff below if you're having issues um hopefully that's helpful hopefully this was fun and as i always do i'm starting to ramble so as always thank you for watching good luck out there